Drought-induced forest mortality is a global problem that's increasing because droughts are becoming more severe and also more frequent. Here in New Zealand, our vegetation is well adapted to quite mild conditions, so they're not used to dry periods. But we have a lot of species that are found nowhere else in the world. Now in 2013, we had the most severe drought in 70 years and it was spread across the country. It cost about a billion dollars to the economy through lost agricultural production. But we don't really know what this drought uh, means for our natural ecosystems. My name is Kate mckinnis Wool, and today we're at the Hulpai Scientific Reserve and this is where I'm doing my research to try and investigate the effect of climatic conditions on our native forests. And I'm particularly interested in the effects of drought. Now my main study species is the New Zealand kauri. This is one of the largest and longest lived trees in the world and it's really useful for this type of research because we know that they respond to climatic conditions. So when we look at the growth rings of these trees, this piece of wood uh, has the annual growth rings that you can see there and those growth rings change in size according to the climatic conditions during that particular year. So I'm really fascinated by trying to understand what drives uh, these different sized growth rings. So we're measuring a couple of things out here in the forest and this tree has some sap flow sensors in it. So here's a sap flow sensor here and they're drilled into the tree and what we do is we measure the amount of water moving up the tree and we can calculate how much water the tree is using. A tree this size uses about 8,000 litres of water every year and that's about 60 bathtubs. Our largest tree uses about a bathtub of water every single day and that's really strongly affected by the climatic conditions. Now as well as the water story, we're also looking at uh, the carbon cycle within the forest and we're doing that by measuring the growth rates of the trees and we're also measuring uh, the amount of litter coming down from the canopy and reaching the forest floor and then finally we're measuring the carbon dioxide uh, coming out of the soil. So this is helping us to get a really good understanding of the climatic responses of these processes of carbon and water cycling in the forest to climatic conditions. Now, because we captured the 2013 drought, we're able to understand that, in fact, the kauri have some good adaptations uh, to dry conditions. They can close their stomata or their leaf pores to save water, and they also have the ability to access deep water stores. But now we want to really understand, well, what happens if the drought is more severe? Or what happens if there are multiple droughts uh, over subsequent years? So the next step is to start a manipulative experiment where I'm using plastic to capture the water before it hits the forest floor uh, to create some drought plots. And that will help us to understand the effects of more severe droughts. And this is known as the Kauri Drought Experiment. Music